Okay, looks like we're recording. So, in order to make this spread, we're going to start out with two and a half cups of warm tap water in a large mixing bowl. You are going to need one package of Rapid Rise Instant Yeast or Instant Bread Machine Yeast. Four ounces of honey. Four tablespoons of olive oil. Eight cups of bread flour, not all-purpose, bread flour. You can use all-purpose, but bread flour works better. Three eggs and a tablespoon of salt. Now, to start off, we're going to take our warm tap water, which is just turn your tap on hot, get it as warm as you can, that's what you use. But we're going to mix in our yeast. We're going to give that a few moments to get good mixed in and activate. Trust me, it's instant yeast. It's not going to take long. All right. Now, we are going to add two of the three eggs in. You're not going to use the last egg until it gets ready to go in the oven. But two of the three eggs. Give me one second. I got to get my whisk. All right. this together, put those eggs in there, see, all right, now, we are going to take four tablespoons of olive oil, and four ounces of honey. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and measure four ounces of honey out because it is hard as hell to get out of those things. So I'm just gonna squeeze about four ounces out. You can be a little over, a little under. This recipe is extremely forgiving. See, I had about a fourth of this already used from the last batch, so as long as we got about half or so left, we should be all right. Yeah, I think we're going to be good. That's real close to four ounces. And you're going to need a tablespoon of salt. Unless you're used to doing it this way. know what a tablespoon looks like in your hand 
I would advise using the measuring spoon. Now we're going to get this combined and mixed in really good. And then the fun begins. Actually making the dough with the flour. cups of flour and there's a, a way that you do this you're not going to dump in eight cups at one time you're going to dump it in one cup at a time and mix it as you go there's one going to start to incorporate that into your liquid and once you get that incorporated in you're going to add another cup and you're going to do that for eight cups If there's a few little clumps here and there, it's not that big a deal because when you start getting the dough formed and kneading the dough, those will work themselves out. All right, that's one. Two. see it's starting to thicken up a little bit more but it's still kind of nice and loose now this is going to be a very wet sticky dough at first until you get it kneaded you'll see in a minute how wet the dough is going to be when you're ready to start kneading Kind of give you an idea of what it's going to be starting to look like here. So now we're starting to get the consistency of pancake batter. So on to number four. lasagna in the oven. This will be going in after that. All right, that's four cups of flour. We're about to start switching over to the spatula. And it's starting to 
thicken up now. Just gotta keep working the dough around, incorporate all that flour into it. Okay, that's number five. switch to the spatula now. Basically rolling and folding the dough over just to get the flour mixed in and incorporated. It's going to start thickening up to this point now to where you're going to need a spatula or a mixing spoon because your whisk just ain't going to cut it trying to mix it now. And you just, just kind of work folding the dough over and just letting the flour just kind of get incorporated into it. All right. Here goes number seven. Seven and eight if you want. You can uh, get your hands into it. Let me go ahead and get this one measured out. So. flour on your hands so your hands don't stick and just start getting that flour worked into this dough and try and get all the loose dough off the bottom off the sides get sticky don't worry about it it washes off and you just start working that flour into the dough and basically what you're doing here doing this is you're kind of half kneading it and stretching the dough and you're, what you're trying to do though is just stretching it and stretching it and folding it and as you're doing that, the loose flour that's in here is being picked up and uh, getting incorporated into the dough. We've got one more cup to go. All right. One more. That's all for that for now. Now then we just start incorporating all of this into the dough. And you just continue just to do this and work that flour into the dough 
until you've got it all incorporated and mixed in. And then once we get this done, we'll knead it for a few moments. And then I'll show you how that looks and how to do that. flying up and getting on the counter because you're going to be putting some flour on the counter in order to knead this as well so flour as much as possible and what you're doing is you're creating gluten strands and that's what's going to give the bread its texture and as you stretch it you get to the moist dough inside that doesn't have flour on it and what happens is it starts picking up the flour. And you're going to do this for several minutes. So, hope you ate your Wheaties. What's going to happen is the longer you need this, the more elastic and firm this dough is going to become. start sticking to the counter this is your best friend because you'll just but right now we still got a little bit of flour here so we're good for a few more moments with it nice elastic and smooth it's, like I said it, it takes a little bit
you're going to do this for probably a good five, six, seven, eight minutes. You just keep working this stuff. This is the hardest part of the whole mess right here. See if I can show you. This right here is starting to smooth out, and how it's starting to you see it be able to rebound out. We're almost there. It's like when that dough becomes real smooth and springy to the touch, that's when it's ready. Just a few more moments of it. and forming those gluten strands in there it's going to give it that nice texture it's going to help it rise when it's in the oven all right I think that's just about good enough See how it springs back? That's what you want. Now, you can either wash the old bowl, or if you're like me, I have two. I'm gonna take just a little bit of oil. sides of this so it doesn't stick to it. We're going to place this inside the bowl. Cover it with a clean cloth and let it rise for an hour and a half. Now, the way I would normally do this would be I would have the oven off but the oven light on and then stick this cupboard inside the oven for an hour and a half however the ovens in use at the moment so we're gonna have to do this on the countertop anyways I'll see y'all in an hour and a half when we get ready to actually take the dough and roll it out and make the braid I'll see you then Okay, so now, actually this has been sitting and rising for about two hours instead of an hour and a half. As you can see, it's doubled in size. we got a little bit of flour on the counter to be able to work with the dough. What I'm going to do next is make the egg bath for the end. That third egg I was showing you. We 
we're going to whip it up. And then you're going to brush this. On the dough right before it goes in the oven. Okay, now that we got that taken care of, what we're going to do is we're going to punch down the dough. And you got mad at me for poking it. <laughs> Turn it out onto the table. And now that we've got it punched down, we're going to knead it again for just a few more moments. And then we're going to cut the dough in half, and then that's when we're going to start making our braids. Let me get this bowl out of the way. What we're going to do is cut this in half. Because we're going to make two loaves. We're going to set this one over here out of the way real quick. And now this one. We're going to cut into thirds because we're going to make the, a simple braid with this one. start rolling this out into a rope, kind of like Play-Doh. And you want to make it uh, about 18 inches long. You need to be able to work fairly quickly with this because that yeast is still active and this is going to want to start proofing and rising again. All right, that's the first one.
just a second. Well, that one's a little bit shorter. Let me work it just a little bit more here. I'm gonna have to work with that. And if you want, you can also do it like this. The whole idea is just to get it into those log shapes. And I think this one's going to have just a little bit more dough than those. bubbles starting to form back in it where it's wanting to rise again. All right, we've got our three strands. The way we're going to do this is we're going to start in the middle. like you would a braid you're going to start from the middle and you're just going to make a simple braid like you would braiding here and then when you get here to the ends you're going to kind of pinch them together and tuck it under and then Let's see, yeah, that one's got to go up under there. Nope, that don't look right. That one's going to go... Let me work it this way. There we go. This one should work. Alright, how do we do this? That goes right there. That one goes right there. And that one goes over that one. No, it won't go over that one. It'll it won't go, go under one. this one. Is that right? No, that don't look right, does it? No. Does it? <laughs> no, because that one's double looped now. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know how we fix this. We turn it upside down. There you go. Yeah, I was right. Yeah. Okay, now this one's going to go over yeah, there you go. like this. There we go. And you're just going to finish working the braid out. Tuck it up under. And there you go. There's your first braided loaf. Now, we're going to take a baking sheet and we're going to line it with aluminum foil. second one we're going to do four strands instead of three and we're going to make a round loaf so what we're going to do here we're going to cut it in half we're going to cut it in half again Four strands.
again, you want to get these nice and lengthened out and uniform as possible. And last one. Now for this one, to make the round one, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the middle. And go over and under. Now, how you have your four sides, what you're going to do is you're going to take this one and this one. Do it the same way, all the way around. If you start with this one going over, then always make, make it go over the same direction. And now, once again, we're back to our four corners. So, 
This one's going to go over. 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 All right, we're going to do it one more time. Actually, this one I think we need to go back the opposite direction to so I can get the ends together. And what we're going to do is take these, pinch them, and tuck them under. And you make this nice little knotted dough ball. All right, now this, once again, goes... on the baking sheet. Now, we're going to cover these with a clean cloth and they're going to sit and rise for another hour. See y'all in an hour. Okay. This has been rising for about an hour. As you can tell, it's doubled in size again. Now, I came up here a few minutes ago and started the oven preheating to 375. I did make one little mistake earlier. I'm going to go ahead and fill y'all in on that now. That last egg, this is when it should have been done not when we were rolling the dough out anyways so I put it back in the fridge took it out a few minutes ago let it get back up to room temperature so that way it just it's easier to work with now what we're gonna do is take our little basting brush now if you want they do make basting brushes that are basically a small paint brush you can even use a paintbrush as long as it's new and clean and been sanitized. So we're going to take our basting brush and our beaten egg and we're just going to start basting the top of our loaves. And when this comes or this gets in the oven and starts baking, it's going to give it that nice, chewy, deep brown crust. Sorry for the camera work. My uh, camera person decided that they were going to bed. So I'm having to do this one-handed right now. But I'm pretty sure y'all can kind of see how this is going.
make sure we get this nice and coated. Now, if you want, you can take some poppy seeds or some sea salt, some coarse sea salt, and put across the top. Uh, when it comes out of the oven, a little bit of cinnamon and sugar across the top to kind of make it a sweet taste. You know, there, there's all kind of things you can do with this. Anyways, we are now up to temp, so what we are going to do... is put these in. Three seventy five for twenty four minutes. Uh, let me try this again. There we go. All right. And I will see y'all in 24 minutes. Okay, everyone, we're back. We got about 20 seconds to go before this comes out of the oven. And I wish y'all could smell this kitchen right now. Oh my God, it smells so good. Anyways, get ready to see the final product. And here we go. Oh, look at that. That just looks so good. And there you go. That's how you make braided bread. Now, after this cools, there's one other thing you can do. You can either wrap it in foil or a plastic bag. Everybody has millions of these things floating around their house. So what I do is after it cools enough to where you can touch it, Put it inside one of these and wrap it up. And let it sit until it's completely cooled down. And what this does is it keeps the moisture coming off. And it makes this the crust on it nice and soft. But there you go.